beautiful day out there. We're having a bit of G zero. Broken equipment. Okay, so you got to be prepared to dig into your equipment a little bit. Notice it's not plugged in. I had plugged it in when I kind of got into the studio. Uh, last night I got in here a little bit late and I was working and then the steam was gone but it was still hot. So what I do is in a case like that you just you just let it cool down. You unplug it, tomorrow's another day. Uh, wires burnt out. So I need to get screwdrivers and some work glasses and figure this out. Okay. So want to lose the parts by the way. Doesn't make a lot of sense because if you lose little screws it's tough to replace them. So put them where you can find them. This here is a straightforward part right you know that, that's a little wire connector and I got to get the other end off because it is just burnt out. Okay so I got to remember that this wire goes in there too Okay, that's a wire for the controller, yeah, so it'll go in there, so I need a new piece of wire, real straightforward type of repair thing, unplug it, examine, look at it, and this is a piece of, uh, oh, I'm going to guess 14 gauge wire, maybe? Okay, okay, you guys. So, what am I going to work on today in the studio? And, uh, fixing this, because I need this piece of equipment. I could go find the other one, but this is a pretty straightforward repair. It take me, let's even say it takes me a half an hour wandering around to find the pieces and uh, uh, crimping them, finding this, crimping it on there, making a little piece like that. So I'll see you in a while, you guys. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, hit the like button, uh, make a comment, and be kind to your animals. I know my dogs are in here somewhere too. Okay, so I'm back. Of course, I left the other piece of old wire over there. That's all nice, new, crimped, everything like that. Proper. Okay. I have to get a better screwdriver. I'll get back to you. Okay, so a little bit of uh, coaxing. Little, I got this piece back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so where's this one? Right here. Oh. Do you anything else? Okay. Looking at the other wires, making sure they're not wrecked or corroded. If you're here, you might as well replace them all. Okay. Now, all things being equal, I haven't touched anything else. Kind of go back. And now we wait and see. Okay. Now, if I had an, uh, I could have left it open and tested it with the ohms and the, you know, the uh, voltage little tester. But uh, no, you don't need to. That was pretty obvious. The wire was blown. Hey, you guys. I'm gonna go back over to the bench. Okay. I'm at the wax bench right now. I've been working on. A little bit of a, of a mental block I had on 
on some elk buglers. So, where do they go? They go like that, I think. They're the whistlers, the buglers, right? And so I cut one off, and there's the other one, and they're right in there, and they make a very unique, distinct sound when you're elk hunting. So this is for all your elk hunters out there. So I just cut this one now. And they're actually ivory. The buglers, they're not bone, they're ivory. Okay, so this is my old, this is something I made, oh, I'm gonna go 15, 20 years ago. Pink mold, so it's gotta be close, <clears throat> excuse me, close to 20 years ago. This was a, um, a Castaldo product. It was still pretty tough to use, but it was a no shrink pink. So I'm gonna inject a wax, and then I'm gonna show it to you, and we'll get back to you. I can't see anything. Okay, I'm back. Injected the wax. Oh, I gave it five minutes. Now I might have to do two or three waxes to kind of get one to turn out. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do another wax. Huh. What's going on here? Oh, okay, I see. There's the trees on the mountain, and there's the elk, and his horns go around. So there's a little bit of extra wax went in there. And so, the bugler goes in here. Okay, so, sorry everybody. Now this might have to be modified a little bit. But there's the elk on the side, and the bugler is going to go in here somehow. I have to figure that out. I might have to make a little bit longer of a ring. Okay. And do another one so the elk's over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the elk is here, and then there's another elk on that side with some mountains going up this way. And then build them together. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be a nice ring. See, because this bugler is a little longer than, than I anticipated. But I could see tying that in. It shouldn't be a problem. And then Rudy's a big guy, so I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna to have to size the ring too. That's gonna to go up there like that. That's gonna be cool. I'm gonna cut some of these mountains away for the next elk to sit on this side. And then those mountains will try there. Okay, so let's inject another wax and I'll get back to you. Okay, while well, I've been fiddling with this for a while, I've got Can you see the elk there? Okay, the elk. And then this is gonna be a tree. Then there's a mountain, another elk, and another tree. And so I'm gonna take some close-ups of it. And I'm just working on it right now. And afterwards, like, you know, you might say, oh, well, that's not fitting very good, Frank. You're right. But this is gonna be one ass kicking ring. I have to size it, so it's gonna go up. Uh, you know, Rudy's a big guy. Okay, but afterwards, I'm gonna epoxy the stone in after he comes for a fitting. And then, once I get it in place, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put this in the vise, put the ring back on there, put everything together, and I'm gonna take a chisel and a punch and I'm going to hammer all this stuff down onto the stone, uh, onto the bugler. I just got to cut a whole bunch of detail in there, and then I've got to take my time, and I'm going to, I like the tree coming up here. That's going to be cool, and the elk horns. 
Okay, uh, I should take maybe a picture or two of it in its state right now to include in the video. Okay, so now you see the pictures. Pretty rough right now. This hour is worth of work to finish this, right? But I wanna get it so that I'm happy with where the stone is. So now I'm gonna bend the horns back. Like I'm gonna, I wanna keep the stone in place. And yes, I'm gonna have some problems getting it out afterwards. But once I get it out, then I'll refix the wax so that the bottom part here will go under. So none of that will change from that half of the ring. But the top part would be like claws. Yeah, and then I'll just, once I get this so that I'm happy with it, the main might need to be just uh, trimmed a little bit. Well, I'll get that underneath there. Yeah. Epoxy, and then once the epoxy, no, not before the epoxy sets, just uh, make sure that's the right size. Because once you go through all this and you set that down, you're talking a, a world of hurt if it doesn't fit right. Okay, this is cool. That's cool. That's a, ma a mammoth piece. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to keep working on it and I'm going to come back to it. Okay, so I did the repair and everything like that. I heated up. Steamer's working great. Okay, well, you can see how. What kind of a fantastic evening it is here in Port Coquitlam. It's just great. frogs. We've got a protected ditch over here. It's uh, and, a, and a causeway over to the uh, De Bonneville Slough. There's a, a protected uh, spotted frog of some sort. There's going to be spotted frogs, all right. Okay, um, I'm just reaching out to you guys. Uh, I didn't finish my video today. I'm going to include this at the end of it. I might get back to it tomorrow. Uh, making YouTube content is tough. I think I'm rolling over 6,000 subscribers pretty well, pretty quick. I'm hoping. And uh, have a great day. Reach out to a pal. Uh, make sure you take the time to enjoy your life. Okay? All right.